What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Talking Sports Podcast right here on YouTube, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Once again, we are bringing you guys another episode on all three of those platforms. If you are on YouTube, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and also tell a couple friends. That would be really nice. And if you're on Apple Podcast and Spotify, drop a follow, write a review if you really feel like it download it just give it a listen we really appreciate it and obviously you guys can tell by the thumbnail by the title what we're about to talk about we're going to be breaking down the 2024 2025 premier league season we're going to give you guys our table some in-depth analysis on each of the teams what teams that are going to make the champions league what teams that might just miss out on champions leagues and then at the end so stay to the end we'll crown each of our champions and make sure you guys let us know in the comment section who do you have winning uh, it's going to be a great season, a long season. We're going to get right into that. But before we do that, Jared, who are we sponsored by? And where can everyone follow us on social media? We've actually actually been posting a lot, some Olympic content that you, you put out personally, and obviously our NFL player rankings. Yeah, we're sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Uh, use promo code TSP to receive 100% deposit match. Um, football season's coming around. Mm-hmm while that we're saying that now um and that's a huge time of the year to use underdog fantasy weekly picks weekly pickums use promo code tsp to receive 100 percent deposit match and we are on social media at instagram uh, on instagram uh x twitter and tiktok at talking sports pd football season we post a lot of content other than just um weekly picks um well we post weekly picks other than just football uh, videos. So a lot more than just the YouTube on our social medias at talking sports PD to stay up to date on our weekly picks and football news. Yeah. College football is right around the, right around the corner. My weekly uh, top 10 will be coming out. Uh, obviously every week with college football week zero starts August 24th. So you'll see that right around there. Obviously our weekly NFL picks that's put kind of been, like they're our most traditional kind of thing we've done since the beginning, our weekly NFL picks with all our records and all that kind of stuff, and obviously other content that comes your way. And we're also not done with our player rankings. We still have off the rest of the offense to get to the player rankings, our top 10 teams, we think, and obviously some head coaches we're going to rank. So we're going to get right into this. I know we don't do a lot of soccer here. We did a European championship preview. We've done Premier League previews before. We've done, we've, we think we've corrected the format of how we're going to do this. If we didn't, then we didn't. So, Jar, we're gonna. I'm gonna obviously throw it over to you. Even though I never, you said you said I always throw it over to you, and then I said I wasn't gonna throw it over to you, but I'm gonna throw it over to you. We're gonna talk about the three teams. We'll both give you our three teams. We're gonna talk about our three teams that we think will be back in the championship next year. So, what are the three teams? First, give me your three teams that are relegated. I'll give you my three teams, and we'll talk about it. Sounds good. So, my three teams in order from 20 to 18. Are going to be Southampton, Nottingham Forest, and Brentford. Um, yeah, we watched a lot of Southampton last year, so we kind of got a good because we're Leicester fans. Yeah, we the championship. Watched a good amount of Southampton. Feel like they didn't deserve to make it. I think they'll be the twentieth and the worst team uh, this year. Yeah. So you have two of my three. Okay. So I have Southampton at 19. I have Nottingham Forest at 18. And I have Ipswich at 20. Oh, so you have Ipswich last. I have Ipswich in, uh, dead last. The only team I don't have that we switched, obviously, I have Ipswich. You have Brentford in. Uh, Nottingham Forest is a team that kind of came to mind because they're at 18. They're on the, the kind of cuff of where yeah. I thought they could have potentially make it. And obviously, they didn't in mine. Um. They've been one of those teams that's also kind of floated with relegation the last two years, 16th and the year before last year and 17th, right? Like I don't look, I'm not going to list you with players that they brought in. I'm not going to tell you that. I know that the players that they brought in that are insanely quality, I'm not going to bullshit you guys, but this is a team that even when they got promoted was finished fourth in the championship and obviously made their way through the playoff. Similar to so very similar to Southampton. That's a little the Southampton's path back to the premier league. I don't know if this team is deep enough or talented enough to kind of get out of that being just in that race of being always potentially getting relegated. So that's one of the teams. 
Um, and then obviously we both agree on Southampton. I didn't think they were supposed to make it. Obviously, yeah. we all thought Leeds was going to make it last year. Obviously, Leicester made it, and obviously Ipswich was the surprise of of the season, and they never took their foot off the gas. But Leeds kind of choked it away, and Southampton kind of secured it. Uh, Ipswich has had a really interesting path, right? And I, well, you let me know where you have them in a minute here. But they finished in 2022, 2023, they finished second in League One. So they go to championship. Their first year in the championship, they finished second in the championship. So based on that, they're going to finish second. And they're about to win at one point. Yes, they were about to. They probably could have. Uh, Lester almost handed it to them. Look, they're a fun story. Um, Omari Hutchinson actually is actually a solid player from Chelsea. That's someone that I actually know who the heck that is. Um, They're a fun team. We watched Jacob Greaves last year at Hull City. That name comes to mind. And Ben Uh, Johnson's a name. Yes. Ben Johnson from West Ham. Look, this is a it's a cool, interesting team. Kieran McKenna wins anywhere he goes, right? Like he almost almost left the Chelsea. He was one of the, the finalists to take the Chelsea job. I don't know if they're probably good enough and just like teams need money. You need to be able to fund your team. And I don't know if Ipswich is rolling in money. I they they're a cool story. They could obviously be one of those teams who are like, oh my god, they finished 14th, 15th, and no one's all coming. I think they come in dead last. I just don't think they have the firepower on their roster uh, to make it. So I think Ipswich probably is a is one time in the Premier League and they go back home. Yeah, for me, I was I have Ipswich at 17. Fair so enough. Like, like right outside the cusp. And kind of like similar to like what you said. However, I'm giving them the edge because they've been going from le- – it's only been a couple, two leagues, but mm. – Went from uh, League One, went in the championship, just killed it. O- almost won the league, go to two, and he goes straight to the Prem in a two-year span. And I get the Prem is the best competition and the hardest to succeed in. But because I just feel like they have the same coach, like you said, he's doing a great job there. Pretty much same players um, with – getting some in some better players in with the money they get. So I think they're, they have the juice to like get in the prem and stay in. Like that's kind of like they're winning the prem, just staying in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then keep getting that cash flow and see what, and if they keep their coach McKenna, um, what they can do in the future. I have Brentford. See like Ipswich is a team that's on the rise and Brentford to me is a team that's on the decline. So I think this is like their paths cross and Ipswich. I give Ipswich the upper hand over them because Brentford, similar to Nottingham last, they they were pretty stable. You know, getting that kind of like a worse Brighton in a way, like always mid mid table, usually mid to lower table. But they used to, they were always really safe, except until like last year. Um, and I just see them slowly as like a, a club that's been in the Prem. I, I don't know how long, but Fairly long, long uh, since we've been watching, um, I believe so. Uh, and they're slowly like declining, I feel like year after year. And you know, with that 16th finish last year, they didn't really bring any names in. Who knows? Tony, that's yeah, talk, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna talk talks. about that. He's, he's on one more year and they might have to dish him out. It just looks like everything's not going in their favor. Um, so yeah, I'm. Giving them the 18, I'm putting them in relegation over Ipswich. Yeah, I had Brentford at 16. I, I look, I don't buy them either, right? It, I don't think they're fully safe. I don't think, I think they've been they declined last year, two years ago in 2022, 2023. They finished ninth, right? So they were similar to mm-hmm. similar to that kind of Brighton kind of model. I don't know if they're. I think they kind of got maybe a little bit complacent. And then look, Ivan Tony goes, if he ends up going in the winter, even in the winter window, right? I don't know if he yeah. goes still in the summer window obviously ending very fast end of the month obviously you have a couple weeks into the season to kind of do it about, about two weeks but then if he goes in the winter window like look they're 15th 16th they lose their best player it, it, it could get really interesting quickly for everton man did you hear that alert on my phone yeah that was loud okay i'm sorry <laughs> but I, so I think loud. if he goes like you said if he goes in the winter window i think that means they're not doing well and there's no point of keeping him. Like if they're 15, well, 16, 14, like they're still competing to stay in. But if they're on like 16, 17, 18, you know, bottom table, 
they sell him, get something out of him, because like, they're not going to stay up either way. And if they go down, they're, they're well, he's also on a he's on a free anyway after this. Exactly. Season. Yeah, he, they're going to lose it. He's not coming back even if they finished like ninth. Oh, uh, so he he said he's not coming back. No, I I just don't think he. I feel like he fits in their long term plans. Uh, should we rattle off the teams we have from seventeen to ten? Is that what yeah. we want to do? So I'll, I can go first. I'll do at seventeen. I have we'll, we'll talk about them in a second here, and we'll break some of them down. But at seventeen, I have Everton. Nice. So they just missed out. So I have seventeen Again. on Everton, sixteen Brentford, fifteen Leicester City, fourteen Bournemouth, thirteen Wolves. 12 Fulham, 11 Brighton, and oh crap, I wrote Brighton twice. <laughs> Shit. Okay. I'm missing a team. Jerry, you go. Oh, I'll, I'll, you... I'll figure out I'll figure who out. I missed. Crystal Palace, maybe? I missed Crystal Palace. Yep. Okay. 11 Brighton, Crystal Palace, 10. Thank you. Okay. See what teammates um... you picked me up right there. Thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, I was thinking Crystal Palace. I feel like that's a club that might be forgotten. No, I had him uh, winning the whole thing. 17, no shade to Crystal Palace fans. Uh, 17, Ipswich. 16, Bournemouth. Um, hmm. 15, Everton. 14, Wolves. And I bet Leicester City, 13. I think that's a fair spot for them. 12, Fulham. 11, West Ham. And oh. 10, Crystal Palace. So you basically swapped out, if I, if I just remembered, you you have you don't have Brighton anywhere from 17 to 10. Mm. You have Brighton in the top 10, and I have West Ham in the top 10. That's the only thing we have different. Yes. We have yeah. teams in different orders, yeah. Um, we'll talk about I want to talk about Everton for a qu- hot second here because I think they're, they're – they're talked about a lot for a team that has not been good the last three <laughs> yeah. years. Their last three years in the Premier League, six. this is from oldest to most recent, 16th, 17th, and 15th. This team is just dangling with relegation. relegation. It came out yesterday over the weekend. They could potentially be facing a point deduction that could be happening for Everton. Obviously, that could be happening for Leicester City. So that's also something to monitor when you guys are doing. My thing is with the point deduction, they got to do at the beginning of the season. They can't just. Oh, dude, I was going to talk. When we get to Leicester City, we'll talk about You already know it's coming like November 1st or some stupid. Like like when. It's, uh, either, either you'll be flying high and they're just going to bring you back down, or you're already going to be sunken and they're just going to keep stupid, punching man. you when you're down. But look, look, I think Everton comes in 17th again. I think they are safe again, but they are just, it's just funny. I think it's just a comical thing with them every year for, or for the last three years that they're just battling relegation. They're on the final day or the, the final weekend or the, the last two weeks, and they're, they do this to stay safe, right? I, look, eventually it's, their time's going to run out. If they don't make wholesale changes to this team, they were better last year under Sean Dyke, right? They um, they finished fifteenth. Mm-hmm. They they were much better, uh, two spots better. But there's a big difference between fifteen and seventeen. Uh, I think they go back, and I think they just make it. And they were also on a points deduction last year, so they were yeah. much better last year than they were, I think, recently. So could they be turning around hundred percent? I just don't know if they are good enough. To and then they they did they did lose one of their best players in Onana to Aston Villa. So yeah. I, I don't know if this team's good enough to stay up. I think they just make it. I think they're just a fun team and if they're really comical to me. Yeah, I I put them at fifteen. I'm in the same situation as you, like uh, not situation, but thought process as you. But I think they're I I do think their their transfer window, the summer transfer window for them, wasn't as good as. Should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, they lost Onana. I feel like they didn't bring in the star power to like replace a guy like that. Mm-hmm. And Aston Villa got a good one. But yeah, like you said, they sat at 15. I, I feel like they're still going to be around. Hey, if they fall, fall 17, it's not like I'm surprised. I think they're between 14 to 16 this year. I think they're, they're they they avoid the cusp just enough. Um, and have a fairly decent year. Let's talk about Leicester City. You have Leicester City at 13. I have them at 15. They're coming off winning the championship, coming in first. But it's been a very interesting summer for Leicester City, right? It's been the floated points deduction that potentially could be coming. Like a year, it feels like that thing. 
They lost Enzo Marasca to their first year manager to Chelsea. They lose KDH, Kieran Dewsbury Hall, to Chelsea. And so far, they brought in four different players. They brought in uh, D. Cordeva Reed, Bobby from uh, Fulham, a winger, a depth winger. Uh, Caleb Okali from from Italy as a transfer. Uh, they, I love how they say Fatalu's coming back in, but yes, they, we all thought he was coming in. And then they just recently have a loan move with a, a cam from Brighton. Uh, Fakandu Bonate. I probably did not get that right. I thought uh, I did Bonate. 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 And then obviously they're, they're linked to Wilfred Zaha, who's obviously known for being a legit Premier League player. That seems like it's basically done. Maybe when you guys are watching this or listening to this, it is done. And they're linked to another striker. I forgot his name from Bayer or whoever, yeah. choosing as a loan in option with the obligation to buy if they stay in the Premier League, right? So it's been, it started hot. Like all of a sudden oh, they, yeah. they brought three guys in in three days. And you're like, oh my God, it's going to keep going. Then it slowed down, but they're adding attackers, added a cam. Wilfred Zaha is a winger, striker, center forward, and and they also potentially are adding another striker. I don't know if it's going to be the guy from Bayer Leverkusen, but it looks like they're going to add a striker before the beginning of the year against Tottenham, which is obviously in a week. Joe, why do you have him at 13 and maybe, which is a, a legit finish from coming up from the championship. Yeah. Why do you have him at 13 compared to where I have him at 15? I have him at 13 because, like, their talent level is not – like any team usually coming out of the championship league, I feel like we have, and we had, obviously we lost KDH, um, but we had, like, I feel like Mabaditi is a premier league winger, in my opinion. Maybe he doesn't get the credit for that, but Fatawu, interesting. He can be very dynamic, still very young, kind of raw. But, like, the defense, I feel like, shirt up last year. I think just when we went down, we were a mess. And, you know, we had Enzo, you know, kind of created a, a team dynamic again rather than, mm-hmm. like, patches of talent. like What we had under Brendan Rodgers. Exactly. And we didn't lose that much besides, you know, Madison, Barnes, and um, Teal- someone else. Teal- but, Teal- Teal- ones, yeah. So those were, like, the three pieces we lost. Went back down, kind of figured out an identity as a team and a culture. Came back up. And yes, we lost KDH, which is going to hurt us a lot, I think, maybe early on. But I, I still think the talent level we have across the board is we got a lot of depth, I feel like. Um, maybe not so much in the striker. But attack, now we kind of shared it up a little bit, especially when Zaha, maybe the other striker, comes in. Um, I just think – I look at – these are the teams that have us over. Ipswich, which I think we're – Mm-hmm. A lot more talent. Bournemouth, which I'm just not keen on Bournemouth. Uh, I have my I flaws. I just never – I always pin them lower. We beat them in the FA Cup. Well, we beat them last year. Everton, like you said, like they're going to be close to the cusp. And the Wolves, I think we have more talent than the Wolves too. Mm-hmm. So I, I think 13 – I'm yes, we might get a points deduction. That might hurt it a little bit. But we're floating in that 11 to 13, I think. Top, bottom table. Yeah, look, I have them at 15, and I think the teams around them that I think they're out, – out, I'm going to put the three teams that I have relegated outside for a second. The, th- the teams that I think are talent-wise around them, Everton, Brentford, Leicester City, Bournemouth, Wolves, and Fulham. And uh, you could put Crystal Palace in there as well. I think those are the teams that are very similar level, and I think you could blind rank them. Brentford too. Or do you think Brentford's better? Oh, did I did I pass Brentford? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I you Brentford, say, you, yeah, yeah. No. I have Brentford at sixteen, so clearly I think they're worse than us. But I I, I think those teams are very similar in talent wise, right? And I think it's going to come down to a game or two. It, re- it really is. And you and yeah, I broke, be tight. You and I broke down the last five games. We were talking about it for Leicester City, and we think those are very winnable games, right? And they're against teams that are all going to be around the same relegation battle. So that last month and a half of the season is going to be crucial, right? Like that's where you're going to make your money when you have a chance to stay up. If they're in that relegation battle, which I do think they will be in 13th, maybe not 15th. Definitely. In my opinion, there's a huge difference. Um, So I do think they're good. I don't know if they're great, but I do like 
what they have on paper and they're starting to bring in some more attacking because what they have before they started bringing in more attacking was not enough, right? Like the striker position is still very weak. I think they need to shore that up and I think they're going to shore that up and it sounds like they will. Um, I want to, I'm not a huge fan of Steve Cooper. We'll see what we're going to, I'm going to give him a chance, right? If Enzo was still here, I think it would be a little bit of a different perception. Yeah. I really do. Um, and you know, he will, he could be back next year when uh, we, if we get relegated and he gets uh, fired from Chelsea because they like to fire their managers. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's where I kind of have us uh, at the moment. Do you, anything and else for, you want to talk about or do you yeah, want to? So for me, um, I, I, cause we flipped them the West Ham. I have West Ham at 11. Mm-hmm. I think West Ham and Crystal Palace, like last year they finished nine and 10, I think. Um, West Ham got the edge there, but I feel like they're very like similarly rated clubs. Like they always, it's always like a right next to each other in the standings they finish. Mm-hmm. And I, I just gave, you know, I, I probably should have put West Ham 10, but I'll just give the edge to Crystal Palace. Uh, West Ham did get Somerville, which we watched in the championship. It's He's going to be really good, but I don't know. Just, Talented. You know who they also got? Who? Nicholas Fulkrig from the yeah, the, the striker. The striker that we watched in the Euros at Germany. I think yeah. that's a good pick. I have, I have West Ham, not to tell you where I have. I have them at nine. Okay. So, so I have, right, I have them, yeah. but yeah, I have them right inside the top 10. Um, I have Brighton at, I wrote Brighton twice. I have Brighton at 10 and I have Palace at 11. I wrote, okay. I wrote them twice. Um, right. Yeah. They usually, I feel like they are very similar. Crystal Palace, I feel like it's. I'm telling you, dude. From 11 to 20, I'm not going to say 20. From 11 to teams not relevant, from 1 to 17, I think you could sit, put a blindfold over you, and just blindly rank them, yeah. and you might have a chance to get it right. Because I think it's such a crapshoot. I think the one team, that I think Brighton starts the trend of getting away from those teams. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with that. You have, you have Palace over West Ham, though. Yeah. Okay, so you don't fully agree. You said Bright. So, because I'm saying the teams from 11 to 17 in mind. I agree with, like, where my table. I seriously agree with okay. that statement. Yeah. So, you you kind of group West Ham into that. I think, yeah, I group West Ham into that. And Is West Ham, right now, I'm going to ask you this. Do you think West Ham is closer to the 17th place team? And who's, who's your 17th again? Uh, Ipswich. Do you think West Ham is closer to Ipswich or Tottenham? I uh, that's a tough one. No, 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 that's a stupid question. Sorry, is West Ham? I'm not. Don't tell me who you have winning. Is West Ham closer to 17? No, no. Fine. I'll ask you a better question. Who is West Ham closer to 20? The team you have in 20th place. Southampton. Or the, don't tell me who you have winning. Or the team you have winning. They're closer to 20th. Okay, that's a fair question. Yeah, that's. A- is Palace, who you have a nine, closer to 20 or one? 20. So w- is your team eight closer to 20 or one? One. Okay. So, so that's, after, I think. After, that, so after that's after your break off. After 10, it goes closer to. I just, I, I think West Ham is closer to my team in first. I have them in ninth. But from 10 to 20, which is Brighton, I think the 10th team in Brighton is closer to Ipswich than they are to my team who I have winning. That's fair. I don't know what I just did there, but I thought that was kind of fun. No, that was, that was a good one. Do we want? Do we want to get to our top ten here? Yeah. So we're well. Give me your ten. What did we say? Ten. We already three, said ten, didn't we? Yeah. What do you want to do? Nine through nine to five, or so then we go. Yeah. Give me nine through five. Give me your nine through five. I'll give you my nine through five, and then we'll talk about them. All right. At nine, Brighton. So Got it. Pretty close. I have them at ten. And then, then this is where it starts getting interesting. I feel like. It's fun. That, that nine spot. Your West Ham on Brighton. I'm going eight Chelsea, seven Newcastle, six Tottenham. And this is this is what I changed right before we started. You're like, oh, you're gonna screw it up or a stupid move. And it could be. Five Liverpool. Wow. Yeah. My nine is nine West Ham, eight Newcastle, seven Villa. Six Manchester United, five Chelsea. Yeah, so we're much different. You you're always higher on Chelsea though. What do you have them? Seven? Eight. Jesus. 
I mean, they finished six last year. Yeah, I got one better. We get the Enzo effect. Yeah. Okay. Um, so talk about your Liverpool at five first, because that's that's yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that I think maybe for me, Man United at six or Villa at seven kind of jumps off the board for me. Um, I, talk, I think talk about your Liverpool thing. Something's gonna change up in that top three. Well, this year. well, I didn't do it, but I get why you could have Liverpool out because yeah. new manager and nobody's been brought in from to that team. Yeah. Super talented, but yeah. are they a little st- granted they, they have a lot of talent. So they, they didn't they really need to bring anyone in. But you know me, I am not oh, what freak what's his name? Uh the who's a striker? Oh Darwin Lewis? Yeah Darwin I'm not huge on Darwin. Um, I just don't think they're going to get to the next level with him at striker. Granted, they came in third with him. Um, they haven't lost a ton, but I think the teams that they were battling with for like the top three, top four spots, I think they got better. And Liverpool losing their coach or getting a little worse. Their coach could come in, be as good or better than Klopp, and they continue to be Liverpool. I just think there's something going on there. Um, I just think they fall out of the top four this year and then kind of go in panic mode a little bit. Like, oh, maybe got to get rid of Salah, get more young talent, uh, and they kind of mess it up a little bit. I, I think they're coming in at five. Tottenham, I mean, we, we talk, what do you think about that with Liverpool, me pinning them five? Like I said, I, I, I get it. I, I understand the yeah. logic behind it. I don't have it. I think they could be in for a potential step back just based off losing Klopp, right? Bringing in a new manager, not bringing in a single or anybody notable to this roster, right? And kind of, it could be a little stale, right? It's Trent's contract's up in there. Virgil, Van Dyke's contract's very up in the air, right? I, I, I do think it's a very volatile situation potentially and maybe a very fluctuating roster and squad. I do think they're a little bit too talented to fall out of the top four, but we saw it two years ago. We saw them coming 15 years ago on the clock, right? So it's, it's not like it's out of the possibility or out of the realm of possibilities. I I think it's an actual legit scenario. Them finishing fifth. I don't have them finishing fifth. I haven't been in the top four, obviously, but I think do think it's a situation. I have man you at six, Jerry, you have man you in your top four. Correct. Yeah. The reason I have Man U at six is because, one, I thought they were so dysfun- dysfunctional last year. I thought they were so dysfunctional with, um, what's his name? Oh, my God. I just blank it now. What's their manager's name? Great. Who, sorry. Who are we talking about? Man United. You, you weren't listening to me. Oh, uh, it was the. What's the guy's ben name? And tag. And, and tag. Yeah, oh, Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. That guy. They finished eighth last year in the prep. Then they obviously made it to the conference to the Europa League base because they won the FA Cup over Manchester City. They did that, and it was a great win, obviously, winning the FA Cup. I think we're buying maybe a little bit too much momentum into that win. I really do. And I also think they haven't brought anybody in. Their main addition was Lenny Euro from France, and he hasn't he got injured. He's in a walking boot. And I don't I don't know his timeline, but it's not great. I think last year was very volatile. Ten Hag almost lost his job. He was probably this close to losing his job. The Jaden Sancho situation, Marcus Rashford. I think it was too dysfunctional. Yeah, but, but that's volatile. Chelsea's doing the same thing over there. Oh, I, I don't have him making the top four. No, yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, Chelsea, Chelsea's a different volatile, volatile situation. Chelsea has too many freaking players. Yeah. They like Man U, I don't think Man U has enough talent, in my opinion, to compete for a top four spot. See, my thing is, they. They finished the year. They clicked at the end of the day. They, they finished the year strong. And mm-hmm. I get, like, I'm not just talking about that FA Cup. Like, they finished their Premier League season strong. Like, beat, let's say FA Cup, beat Brighton, Newcastle. Um, they just got a lot of wins, a lot of points towards the end. Uh, I just think they're heading the right direction. That they, they, have a, they have young talent. I like Kobe Mondu. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I think, I think I th- it, it's it's a shot in the dark. I think I wanted to switch up the top four a little bit. And I think this would be a possibility. Uh, but I, I agree. Like they're not. 
they didn't make the acquisitions that you would think a man you would make. I just thought it was too toxic towards the end of the year with Ten Hag coming back or not. And I think he seems like a manager on a really short leash. And if it doesn't go well early, like what happens to that team? I don't know. Look, finishing six is honestly a step up from where they finished last year. So I honestly think they get better. I just don't think they get into the top four. Uh, That's where you and I a little bit disagree on that situation. Any other teams you want to talk about before we reveal? We know you can figure out who the top four is, but our order of our top four. Kind of similar last year, basically, Mm -hmm. right back type of thing. Tottenham. What? Who did you say, Tottenham? Tottenham, yeah. I feel like they're always in this five. You have them at five or six? I have them at four. I just revealed it. Oh, right oh sorry. No, 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 you're good. I have Villa at seven. So it sounds like Villa's in your top four. Yeah, they are. It sounds like Man U's in your top four. Every other team is in my top. And then the two juggernaut. Arsenal and obviously Man City are in your top four. So we have two of the same top four. Just go top now, four right now. Just, just uh, you go. Yeah. You got it. Reveal it. All right. Man U four, Villa three, Arsenal two, Man City one again. I have Tottenham four. Liverpool three, Manchester City two, Arsenal. Arsenal one. That's fair. Yeah, it's, it's between Arsenal. It's a race between Arsenal and City, I think. Yeah, and the okay. The reason I have Tottenham in, I think, bringing in Archie Gray from Le- Leeds. We watched him play. You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? No, I knew the the long. Oh, okay. Years. Yeah, you didn't give me your you didn't give me your reaction at all. I thought you didn't hear me. So we watch Archie Gray at Leeds, right? I think he's very he's a, he's like 19, 20 years old, has superstar potential. They bring in Dominic Solanke from Bournemouth. Bournemouth's probably best player at striker. And they also have Son and James Madison. Ah, and Udogi, who was a t- finalist for Premier League player, uh young man, young player of the year before he got injured as a left back. I think this team's good. I really do. And I, I know they we're very in the same spot, like you always say. They finished fifth last year. I'm only yeah, having like same. I didn't mean like same. They're always competing well, for it. Yeah, the last five years they finished sixth, seventh, fourth, eighth, and fifth. During yeah. that same competing range, it comes down to the end of the year. Obviously, a couple years ago they finished fourth and made the Champions League. I think they go back to the Champions League this year. I really do. I think Madison staying healthy. I think Suns an all world player. I think I like their additions this summer. I really do. Um, Archie Gray, like I said, uh, Solanke, uh, they kept Timo Warner. Uh, they kept his, well, they brought him back from Leipzig. I, I think this is a good team. I think they have a legit chance to make a run. I think there's a step off from like where we see them competing for a title. I don't think they're there, but I think they're legit. And I think they have a chance to make that four. So that my, I, my, my problem with Tottenham, sorry to cut you off. My no. problem with Tottenham, I, I agree. I think they always make the right acquisitions. Like I mm-hmm. love Brennan Johnson. I thought Richarlson was going to be good. Um, and they made some good midfield. Um, I forget mm-hmm. his name, but like Wait, they make what? the right moves and the right acquisitions to get like young, talented players. Mm-hmm. I just think there's a problem with like getting the best out of those players. Something with the system, like Richarlson was supposed to be pretty good. He mm-hmm. wasn't. I think they have another striker there. I forget his name, but he's like all right. They're they're since Harry Kane left, they're missing that. Well, they brought in Dominic Solanke. I know, but my thing is, I don't like. It's great looking out, like, oh, they okay. got Solanke. <clears throat> but when he plays, I wonder if he's actually gonna like do well, what, do what they, they paid for. Yeah, I got you. Um, I like Brendan Johnson. I thought it was a stud, not a stud, mm-hmm. but really young, promising talent. He hasn't done really much there at all. Like besides Son and that attack, it's kind of like a mismatch. They got Timo Werner. He, I mean, he did all right. I think Archie Gray could be an X factor this year off the bench for them. I really do. I think I think he has that kind of juice and that kind of energy. A kid coming from the championship from Leeds, coming to the Premier League and playing for a team that's competing for obviously a European spot and a potential Champions League spot. No, but I get what you're saying. Uh, 100% get it. And then I have Liverpool at three. You have Manchester United at three, right? No, four. No, I have Aston Villa at three. And Man United at four. Why do you have? We talked about Man U already. Why do you have Villa at three? Because I, I look, and they made Champions League. They made top four last year. I have Villa at seven. Why do you think? Maybe I'm not saying it wasn't a flash in the pan, but they're one of those teams like 
how can they build why do you think they're building on their success from last year basically i mean like we mentioned the everton oh, i think onana is a great transfer in yes. i think that kind of helps them solidify their midfield um and I, I i don't think it's i don't think it was a one and done i feel like they got a lot better this year capitalizing on you know what they did last year and i get like aston villa is not the name like a Man City, Arsenal, Man U, Liverpool, Tottenham. But I think they're in a window right now where they can compete with them. It's who knows how long that window is going to happen, but it could be a very short one. It could have been last year. I don't think so. I think it's a like two to three, four year window where they can compete with them. They're making the right decisions. Um, they've been just as a team, I don't know, just doing the right things over there. Mm hmm. I will, and I, I think they continue, maybe not three, at least top four, I think, again this year. They're going to repeat. Um, although, yes, last year they weren't really playing European football, I, I don't believe. Um, I they finished they, seventh the year before. So they were playing like championship league? Championship. Europa Conference League. Oh, con that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm getting messed up with the English Championship League. Europa Conference League. So that's kind of like. It's European football, but it's not one of the big time. So they their their focus was more on let's go try to win this title, or let's at least make a Champions League spot. You know, mm -hmm. Jared, why do you have Manchester City at one and Arsenal at two? This is how we're gonna obviously end the show. Let us know down in the comment section who you guys have winning. Is it Manchester City? Is it Arsenal? Or is it Liverpool? Man, you Chelsea, Newcastle, Tottenham, Villa. Let us know in the comment section. But Joe, we're in the show. Man City, Arsenal, you have, we've been going kind of back and forth the last two years with both of those teams. Man City's obviously come out on top both of the times. Why do you think they make it a third time? It's because I, I mean, they have the edge in talent. Probably. And they have the edge in coaching. Mm -hmm. Not throw, like, Arsenal's got really good talent, really good coaching. Just Man City, just above that a little bit. Um, that's frankly, and they have that winning, like, winning culture in there. Guys that they loot, they lost some good players, like Julian Alvarez. I think with the Atletico Madrid, they lost some good players. They did, yeah. But they also just keep pumping up good players uh, within their, whether it's um, academies or going out and getting some youngsters or just key pieces. They also have. You know, De Bruyne, who's coming in healthy, and hopefully he stays healthy. Um, I just think, to me, talent and coaching, Arsenal's right there. I just don't think they're going to – maybe next year or the year after, they'll get that edge. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not this year. They're going to three-peat. I think it's – I think they're due, right? And I, and I think – They're due, yeah. When a team is due, I think it usually goes in their favor, right? Um they're still super talented, right? Obviously, at the t attack, you have Bukai Saka, Kai Havertz, uh, Gabriel Martinelli. They also have Gabriel Jesus off the bench as well. David Re Rea came over from Brentford, I believe, last year and turned into a legit goalkeeper for them. Odegaard and Declan Rice in the midfield. And then they added, they still have Ben White. They still have William Saliba. But then they added Ricardo Calafori from, uh, from Italy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from Italy at a team that a player that kind of became a superstar overnight in the Euros, right? And became the face of the Italian team and, and one of the superstar players at a very, very, very young age um, and kind of took the soccer world by storm for a bit. And look, well, they cashed in uh, and he goes to Arsenal and he projects to be another star. I think, I think they're legit. I think they have a legit defense. And I think maybe this is it for Manchester City in the sense that they're coming to the end. It sounds like Pep Guardiola is coming to the end of his tenure at Manchester City. And I think maybe this is the time where the reins kind of get passed, right? Um, they coach together, Arteta and uh, Pep. I think this is kind of the passing of the torch. Passing of the torch. And it's not like I have Man City finishing 10th. They're finishing second, right? They're still it's going to be a good neck and neck the whole year. Someone gets the edge right the last four or three games, I mm -hmm. feel like. Yeah. Jar, I'm going to ask you this. I know you have Villa at three. Would you say, I know this is going to sound stupid and it might be a stupid question, but 
you know what? Fine. Out maybe out of the teams outside of the top four, what what team do you think could make a title chase? I'd say out team, of my top four, outside of your top four. I mean, I'd say I'd say Liverpool, which like I'm thinking they're not. There's something's going to be off this year, uh, whether it's you know whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But if you know they come in. Coaching does like didn't like affect them. Mm-hmm. New coach, they love him. He's good. They have the same talent. They could they could make a title race. Mine would be Chelsea. Yeah, and I think this is the most interesting se- season for Chelsea in a while. Right, their last two years they finished twelfth and sixth. This most recent year, they obviously were supposed to be in the Europa League. Now they're in the Europa Conference League because they got booted out because Man U won the FA Cup. For some reason, that's how that works. But the three years before that, JR, they finished fourth, fourth, and third. So they were a staple in the top four for three straight years. Won a Champions League in 21, right? And they've kind of taken a back seat, 12th and 6th the last two years. Ownership's weird. They don't want to keep a manager, but they're so talented. And I'm looking at their transfers in. You know that website I sent you when we're looking at the transfers in, transfers out. Most teams, four, five, six. <laughs> I, got, I got a laundry. I got a CVS pharmacy receipt right now of players in for Chelsea. That could mean two things. It could mean one, it's a great thing. More talented players, maybe your team's better. The problem is, does Chelsea ever find an identity? Sometimes too many players. There's depth, and then there's too much depth. Chelsea is 41st team players. They're trying to like fill every problem before they have a problem. and then they they want, It's just, everything. if Enzo is able to figure out a rotation and a squad and a lineup that he likes, this team is very good. The problem they've won in the ran into the last couple of years is that there's so much talent and there's so when, when you have so much talent, there's gonna be players that aren't playing. It creates a toxic yeah. environment in a toxic locker room. If that's avoided this year and Enzo does what he did at Leicester when he everyone bought in, completely different style of roster and completely different talent and depth of roster. If he does that, I think they have a chance to make top four, but if obviously for this argument, I guess potentially battle for the title. Well, they're also, talented, dude. Is there not like a, uh, a limited roster you could have? I have no idea. There's got to be. There's got to be. They have 41st team players, I read. Yeah. <laughs> 40. Right now, this is Chelsea, so it's probably legal. This is what their lineup s- sets out to be. They have Reese James, uh, Badadeshli, Fafana, and Mark Cucurella. And then on defense, they have Casado, or I mean midfield, Casado, Enzo Fernandez, and KDH. And then they have Cole Palmer, uh, Nakanku at striker, and then Raheem Sterling. That's a real. I will say, I, I think you mentioned Cole Palmer. He's due for a huge year this year. I think he's the real deal. I will say. He's on that Jason Tatum revenge tour from not exactly. playing with the country team. Hey, he got that one goal, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. He's the one who scored that. Yeah, in, in the final. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I think Chelsea is very volatile. I think they could be eighth, ninth. They could finish second. I think – I don't know if you agree with this. I think they have the most boom or bust. Yeah. This If this team if, – if everything goes right, they're a legit contender. But we've seen the last two years, it's gone completely. Haywire. I wouldn't say boom or bust. If you mean like the bust, like. I mean, bust finishing nine or ten. Top table, like eight. Nine, yeah, nine. no, dude, yeah. they're not finishing 18. They're not getting rogue. Yeah. I'm saying bust being 10th because they would be pissed if they finished 10th. Yeah, which they probably should. You're expecting top six, in my yeah. opinion. It's just my thing is it's also a lot of co- uh, pressure on Maresca. And, like, and I'm rude. I'm, I'm sort of rooting for Enzo. I'm not. I'm, yeah. Like obviously, you know we play Chelsea. Like we're rooting for him, but it's like the I'm rooting more for KDH than Enzo. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it's not KDH's uh, fault that we sold him. But like with Maresca, like do you think like his coaching strategy differs because he knows like we got to be succeed like early, fast, well, and got to be really good. Like he can't his, throw it like his. You know, with Leicester, it's gonna take time. But like this is because I'll learn players were learning like. The system, but they bought in. His they bought in yeah. one. They put their egos to the side in Leicester, yeah. and they and they bought into the slow. It's boring. It's a yeah. very boring system, but it was efficient. It worked. Boring system of possession soccer, pass, 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 pass. 
play from the back, basically have a goalkeeper that can pass. That's a legit pass that can legit set up the offense. Does Chelsea have their egos are through the roof? They're, this team is extremely talented. Every single player on this probably starting lineup can probably can play anywhere else in the Premier League and anywhere else in the world. They're that good of a team, but can they buy into what Enzo was preaching? Can the fans and can management stay patient? with what Chelsea is doing. It's a huge what if, if it succeeds, it's going to be great. And they're going to be a legit title contender, but there's a chance everything kind of explodes and combusts into a team that doesn't make European football and finishes closer to 10th than first. I agree. Okay. That is going to do it for our premier league episode. Guys, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel and let us know who you guys have winning. Is it man city? Is it Arsenal or is it someone else that we didn't mention that has a chance to win this? Please let us know in the comment section. We really appreciate it. We are sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you guys use code TSP for 100% deposit match up to $100. Soccer season, Premier League is right around. La Liga, Serie A, Bundesliga, the French League, anything else you want to get in there. And obviously, MLB baseball is still going on, but college football, we're literally right around the corner. NFL. A little bit past that, there's so much going there at Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you guys use code TSP. Jared, where can everyone follow us on social media to make sure that they can get all our, our picks, our player rankings, and all our posts? Yeah, guys, we are on Instagram, X, and TikTok at Talking Sports PD. Like Peter, I'm not going to ramble on again, but what he said, football's here. Post a lot about it, post weekly picks, um, insights. So, mm -hmm. Please hit us up with a follow um, if you're not already. We really appreciate it at Talking Sports PD. That is going to do it for us. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple Podcasts, drop a like, drop a follow. We really appreciate it. This means a lot to us when you hit the subscribe button. It's really important to us to show that you're engaging with us. Like, comment, and subscribe. NFL content, college football content right around the corner. You guys don't want to miss this. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the first week of the Premier League. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the marathon of what the Premier League season is. To recap, Jera has Manchester City winning another Premier League title, and I have Arsenal getting over the hump and winning a Premier League title. We'll see if we're right in about 700 years, about 10 to 11 months. Uh, and Jeez. that's going to do it. For, yeah, we got, we got until May. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let us know in the comment section who you guys have winning NFL college football content right around the corner. That is going to do it for us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and thank you.